Hi there, Steve Coffin here today and I want to talk about what makes an ideal language teacher. And uh, I'm going to talk about that for a couple of reasons. It has to do with the things that I'm experiencing in learning Arabic and it's also in response to an article that I saw via Twitter about language instruction. Uh, I would like to say first of all that uh, we've had some response from people willing to help out with our mini stories project uh, translating and recording and um, so and we had one person who volunteered uh, to do Swedish stories for us and another in Danish so I very much appreciate that. In both cases the question comes up of regional call them accents so in southern Sweden, for example, they pronounce the R in a guttural way. Uh, is that, uh, you know, an obstacle for beginner learners? I have no idea. This is something we're going to have to deal with. Uh, also, when it comes to, you know, accents and stuff and the different um, dialects, uh, I am working on modern standard Arabic myself. I would like to get other versions of the many stories in Egyptian Arabic and possibly Levantine Arabic. So I looked up Levantine Arabic and it appears that that's not a, uni you know, a unified concept either, that in Lebanon they speak differently from Syria, from Jordan, from Palestine. So I'm not sure what to do there, but if there are people out there who are willing to translate our modern standard Arabic lessons into uh, regional vari variations, and record them for us and if the sound quality is good then I would be very interested in hearing from you and even languages like Catalan or Thai or if anybody wants to volunteer I'm prepared to give a year free use of link assuming that the accent the quality and so forth is of a high quality all right so that's a bit of a digression um, now or even we had a request for Tamil Again, if someone can provide that in Tamil, we can also put Tamil up. Uh, now, on this question of what makes a good language teacher, all right? Uh, the best language teacher I ever had was the professor I had at McGill University who essentially tremendously motivated me to learn French. And after French, I subsequently learned other languages. So he had a major impact on my life, not by teaching me the rules of French grammar, but by motivating me. So I would like to say up front, I think the most important quality for a good language teacher is the ability to motivate people. The, overwhelmingly, that's the most important thing. Um, because once the person is motivated, he'll put in the time. Okay. And if he's motivated, he will pay attention to the language. So if you remember the three keys to language learning were your attitude, your willingness to put in the time or the time that you spend, and your ability to notice, but the ability to notice is, is, is almost, almost something that comes naturally. If you're motivated, if you spend time with the language, you will start to notice things. So, therefore, that's the most important element. Now, this article that I was going to refer to, it talked about the sort of, uh, it calls itself, and I'm going to put a link to this, but it says, cutting the Gordian knot of language curriculum, structural syllabus, as a checklist, okay, again, it's one of these very learned, you know, academic uh, thing here, uh, you know, articles, but it basically presents the arguments of a certain Rod Ellis, who is very well known in the ELT, you know, English language teaching world, versus another gentleman uh, whose name is uh, Brumfit. And so the idea is, you know, traditionally, uh, languages, English, are taught and there's a syllabus and these are the grammar points that the teacher has to cover in this order and this is how you teach it and then you test your students on it. And um, according to Brumfit, then um, he has a graph as you'll see in this article and in the first year emphasis should overwhelmingly be on accuracy Whereas by the fifth year, the emphasis is overwhelmingly on fluency. All right. Alice has a different perspective. And uh, there's a, you can drill in this article. In fact, I'll put both links up there. One to this article and then to the Alice article. And he says, no, you should be 
Uh, you can't introduce the grammar at it. First of all, there is no natural order for learning grammar. And second of all, if you introduce grammar too early, the students aren't yet ready for it, which is absolutely true. And then he says, therefore, we should have a whole bunch of activities and tasks in the classroom and then gradually focus more and more on accuracy, which as a general concept, I agree with. However, getting back then to, so that's the debate. And also um, Ellis in his article uh, presents some information from a very interesting survey that he made of teachers. And the, the gist of it is that lip service is paid to the idea of call it a communicative approach or a content-based approach to language learning, whereas the majority of teachers feel that we should concentrate on grammar and they give reasons such as either they say that it's necessary, despite all the uh, language acquisition research by Stephen Crash and others, people don't believe the research, and they think that the students expect it, which may be true, but isn't always true, and so that there's this tremendous dichotomy between some sense of uh, appreciation of the fact that language learning is, is generally is a, is a gradual process of, of absorbing a language through lots of activity and it might be primarily listening and reading. Uh, the, the, the research says that, but the teachers still want to teach grammar. Uh, another reason I think they like to teach grammar is because it's something concrete that they can teach. So. I get back now to my Arabic. I have started with Arabic reading on my iPad, reading um, Euro News in Arabic, okay? Now, in order, uh, using Link. Now, in order for me to make sense of Euro News, and it comes with audio and text, I am looking up every second word, more than every second word. But I am being exposed to the language, and it is interesting content. And I vary that this morning while doing the dishes, I was listening to one of my earlier lessons and I just noticed more and more stuff now. I noticed, for example, that if it's, uh, you know, they did something, it ends up in un at the end of the verb and all kinds of little stuff like that, which I had been exposed to before and forgotten. And that problem with grammar instruction is you forget it right away. So. Uh, I feel if I wanted the ideal grammar, the ideal teacher for me, okay? First of all, it doesn't have to be a native speaker. Native speaker has many advantages. Very often the native speaker is more motivating because you want to communicate with a native speaker in the language. However, you can have a teacher and someone you talk to. And the person you talk to and you converse with that has to be a native speaker, in my opinion, or that's, it's best if it's a native speaker. I find that more motivating. You can also talk to non-native speakers, but I prefer the native speaker. However, if I had a teacher, now here's my description, the ideal teacher for me, say in Arabic, is someone who could go out and find me material, graded, because this Euro news is just a little too difficult, not a little, a lot too difficult for me. And now after four months, I'm tired of my mini stories. I still do them because I pick up stuff every time, but it's no longer fresh. So I would like to have something that's fresh and yet interesting. I don't want children's stories. I don't find that interesting at all. But something about the history of a certain Arab country or whatever in somewhat simplified language, sort of graded. I had this when I was learning Chinese, for example. Does that exist? Can someone find it? Or even, you know, I bought some, uh, I bought some books on learning Arabic, for example, this Manuel de Arab Modern, but there's no digital text. So I actually phoned them this morning and I said, do you have a digital text that I could use in Link? And they said, no, we don't. Why don't you? First of all, I don't believe them. I think maybe they didn't understand me. I said the uh, text uh, digital, I should have maybe said the uh, text electronique or something. I said, no, not pas the text numérisé. And I, I might contact them again. However, the best teacher is someone, therefore, who motivates you, who encourages you to do a lot of stuff on your own. I don't think it's necessary to have activities where we force people to use the language. I certainly don't think it's necessary to have a, a syllabus or a curriculum of grammar points that have to be ticked off. In fact, this graph that was in this article where year one is mostly accuracy, year five is mostly fluency, I would stand it on its head, you know. Initially, it's just get it in you, listen to it, read it, 
words. You know, kids in a classroom could be encouraged, just like I was doing, save a bunch of words, see the number go up, okay, 10, 20, 30. Every time you save 25 words, bingo, something comes on. Just deal with the language, get it in you. You don't need to have grammar to understand more or less what's in the text. As long as a teacher doesn't come along and ask you, what was this and why was that? Forget all of that. Just let people get exposed to the language, watch movies, cartoons, read, listen, get that initial exposure experience with the language. So a teacher that can guide you, help you find resources. Okay, you're learning Romanian. Where do I find Romanian content? Where do I find Romanian grammar? And if I have a question, I can ask. And that, if I ha have a question and I ask, the answer can be provided by a non-native speaker. Uh, if I want to actually have an online discussion, again, teacher should say, here's where you can go and find language partners, native speaking language partners, and maybe you'd have to pay for that. But at least it provides you with some sense of what you can do and how you can learn. To me, a language teacher is a guide, is a cheerleader, is a coach. Uh, if that uh, guide, teacher, coach also is a native speaker and can provide that native interaction so much the better if not there are other ways of getting that and in in any case in my view a large part of the initial period is getting the language in you and uh, again on this graph here uh you know they're talking five years uh, five years that's a long time look i've been at arabic for uh four months and I'm starting to read this Euro news and listen to it. I don't understand it very well or at all, really. But in a few months, I will, because when I started four months ago with my mini stories, I didn't understand anything. So it needn't take five years. If the teacher can motivate the learner, guide the learner, show them the way and not worry so much about instructing the grammar based on a certain curriculum, because once the learner has had enough exposure to the language, they will then be able to use even instruction that the teacher provides in grammar or other sources of grammar. I can find it on the web, Arab grammar. I can buy a small book. It's not that big a deal. Okay, so that's uh, again, picking up on my normal themes, but specifically with reference to uh, what makes a good language teacher. Bye.